Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Family Matters. My name is Purity Museo. The fight against female genital mutilation has been a fraught with both failures, successes, resistance, and since its ban in 2011, that's in the country, FGM has been secretly conducted underground by either health professionals or even at home by family members. Now, the head of state has declared himself in the fight against FGM, which is now listed as one of the harmful practices alongside gender-based violence. Why are some cultural practices or why are some communities still holding it so strongly as some of the cultural practices? What are some of the harmful effects of FGM? And of course, where are we as a country in regard to the journey to eradication of FGM? Now, tonight on the show, we have a um, special guest, of course. And next to me is Koriata Nampayo, FGM champion. She is from Naro County. She is a champion because she has gone through FGM. She has gone through the effects that come alongside FGM, which include early marriages, early, pregnancy. early pregnancies, fistula. fistula, all that. She will be sharing with us you know, the, her experience, and there we'll be able to understand why it's been listed as one of the violations, as a violation against uh, human rights, against women and girls. And then at the middle is a gentleman. His name is Charles Lechore. He's an FGM expert. He has been part of those leading anti-FGM campaigns in the country. Of course, he will be just telling us where we are as a country in terms of the journey, eradication of FGM, and what needs to be done alternative rights of passages that ought to be considered by these communities. And then at the far end is the lovely, let's say, Seleyan, yeah? Um. Seleyan Sokoi, who is a beneficiary of some of these alternative right of passage programs. She escaped, she is from Kajado County. She escaped FGM, yeah, practice. And now she's almost graduating. She will also be telling us how lucky she was and how that was taken by the family members and even friends. Thank you so much for joining us and karibu sana to the show. Asante. Thank you. Yes, I'm Asante. looking forward to having an uh, interesting program with you. Let me start with you, Charles. Um, there are about 200 million women globally that have undergone the cut. Maybe you can tell us here in the country how many people are we talking about and what are some of the regions affected? Uh, thank you, Piriti. Um, first of all, to congratulate KBC for the 70 years anniversary. Yeah. I thought we were the oldest because we are 60 years, <laughs> 61 years. And I just realized KBC yeah. is really and just Thank done you. a good work in media. Um, AMREF of course was uh, started in 1957, very old uh, organization and uh, it started by providing medical services to remote uh, areas of this country and today um, AMREF Health Africa uh, really focuses on vulnerable <coughs> communities in Africa through it is programs in Kenya, Ethiopia, Sudan, Tanzania, uh, Senegal, West Africa, South Africa, uh, and supported by, of course, our international uh, uh, organizations. Um, globally, yeah, um, 100 to 140 women have gone through the cut. This is global statistics. But looking at KDH in Kenya uh, of 1998, there's been some decline. Uh, 1998, it was 38%. In, of course, 2003, it was 32%. It reduced by 6%. And the KDHS of 2008 to 2009 was 27%. Uh, percent. Currently, it's about 21%, meaning 21 girls out of 100, you know, will, of course, go through uh, the cut. And, and looking at uh, the prevalence, it also depends with the, the, the ethnic communities and also looking at the counties uh, that were actually the, the, former, the former provinces. So again, for the communities that are practicing FGM in those communities, then they give the preference mm. per, per, per regions. For example, Central is about 26.5% prevalence of FGM, Nyanza at about 3%, and here we have Kuria bordering Nyanza. And then uh, Rift Valley is at 2.1 percent, and Northeastern is actually about over 90, yeah. 95 percent. And of course, again, Northeastern borders Somalia, and therefore the prevalence of uh, of FGM in those in, the, in, the, in Somalia, of course, is high. And there is also cross-border 
issues of uh, prevalence, yeah. both in Kenya and Tanzania, bordering Tanzania and also, and also Somalia. Um, they are, they are, they are in rural areas. The likelihood of women going through FGM is very high, yeah. but in urban areas, of course, um, they, they, it also happens. I think two or three weeks ago, four girls uh, died of FGM in Thika. So this is a, this is a very complex practice. It's not going away. Um, it's a social norm, which is a set of rules that govern the community and have been designed by the community to guide them and also to bring uh, cohesion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me engage you, Seleyan. Uh, you're very young. You come from one of the communities that uh, were listed to be practicing FGM at a very high percentage. Maybe you can tell us the journey towards, because you were part of the program by AMREF, uh, Health Africa on their program on alternative right of passage. Maybe you can tell us how lucky your journey, uh, maybe how did they get in touch with you? How did you survive FGM? Okay, to me, it has been a long journey. It was not easy, but I thank God that it came to pass. In 2012 and AMREF, when that program, alternative right of passage, was in my village in Gurman, in Magadi far end of Kajada West constituency. AMREF came, they did the program, the mentorship. I decided to join them. And then Charles was part of the leading team and other AMREF colleagues. And I decided to follow them. I decided to give a, a deaf ear to the community and the negative things about FGM. Mm. Some of the community members are telling me like, how, how can you stay without undergoing that practice? Thank God that I had supportive parents I thank my dad and my mom, wherever they are, they gave me the support I needed. AMREF took me for an exchange program in the Netherlands. I went there, I admired the life there, and I kept in my mind that I want to live like those people. I want to achieve what those women wa are doing now. How I old were you when? I was in Form 3 yeah. in Patterson, in a secondary called Patterson Memorial, in my village. So when I saw women driving there, I saw people living a lavish lifestyle, I admired, and that's made me to work hard in school. When I came back, I had a different perception about what a woman can achieve. Mm -hmm. I decided to work hard. I finished my Form 4. The community, some of my neighbors and people in my community were like, they were telling even my parents, you mean you're not circumvising your girl? And my parents are like, she's not comfortable with the idea, so leave it. So I just went on with my school life. I never listened to them. I joined college, Kenya Institute of Management. I did my diploma. So when I was in my college life, they started accepting that I'm not for that idea. And now they forget about it. You know, people talk, but it comes a time they forget. OK, when I'll be getting back to you, and you will tell us, especially uh, whether you, you also, before you were introduced to this alternative rite of passage, whether you were looking forward to undergoing the cut because girls around you were also undergoing the cut. But just before that, uh, Koreata, you have seen it all, honestly. <laughs> That's what I can say. <laughs> Maybe you can tell us your I'm, journey. I'm a survivor. You are a survivor. You <laughs> are, I, I call you a champion. <laughs> when did this happen? Uh, you know? I was born in a village called Ololunga. 1987 so it is a remote village so when I was in classics the culture ilikuwa evil ilikuwa mm. yeah so uh, the girls to look to Nairobi like December kuna ile so after that I think on 11th in November 22nd I can still remember 1999 the whole thing. But we were happy because it was something that shows that now you are going to be a human. Kuna vitu zingine nyauta kukifanya juwe sasa si mtoto. Umeza kuwa na boyfriend. Because kama komasa yi sasa ukikuwa baithi watu ukimalisa kutairi kuna wale wasitana atokombe. Una boyfriend? Ata omomo watanza 
like even rekaya mama zako ataanza kuongea stories zingine ukiwa kwa sababu they want you to know the way forward so baada hiyo i was in class 8 and i had this boyfriend of mine and so you <laughs> went through the cut when you were in yeah, class 6 when i was in class 6 when you uh -huh. when i was in class 6 so baada hiyo nika i went back to school mm. then in class 8 my one of my cousin told me that you don't have a boyfriend you know the the women will break your virginity with kakakalabash <laughs> and they will break your virginity so uh nikakuwa na boyfriend after i think the guy break my virginity i got pregnant to my first born which now in state house girls so after that nikapata fistula fistula nikapeano nikaolewa so now i'm married uh, i'm a dropout i had fistula for 12 years and then nikaendelea tu na marriage life nikapata like i have five kids by the way four girls one boy then after that on 2015 i'm brave wakakuwa na ile program yenye kwa Kenya ya ku treat fistula so one of my cousin told me that namba i think you have fistula because you want to pass stool bila kusikia ah, nikakuja nika malisi wa then I, i went back and say that i will not keep quiet kwa sababu how many girls are going through this yeah who am I? nilikuwa nafaa kwa nani in my future if nimeenda through school mpaka nikamaliza ningekuwa nani ninge safe was jana wa gani ninge safe watu wangapi out of poverty but i thank god because nimekuja nime fight na fight if jam na fight fistula and i'm trying my best all right yeah. so charles why is um fgm regarded as a violation against or, or human uh, human rights against women and girls um it's regarded as a as a violation to human rights uh, basically because uh, these are underage girls who go through the cut and it's prohibited uh, within most of the laws of this country mm -hmm. the 2011 act actually prohibits and carries very uh, heavy penalties for those who are this practice or even for those who stigmatize uh, those who are not going uh, through it, through it and i think the reason that why the practice still continues of course is 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 because of the social norms social norms are a set of rules that of course uh, guide the community and bring that cohesion and for a social norm uh, to have weight it has three elements one it is valued by the community so it's something that is really valuable I think you have heard Koreata saying yeah they really wanted to go through through it to be like other girls. Number two, it carries what we call rewards and sanctions. So if you are circumcised then you get your father's or parents get cows, you get an in-law and you are the the parents also get some status of respect. Mm -hmm. If if you don't go through it then you are ridiculed by others um they term and and even women who will deliver you later on when 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 these girls want to be supported cannot be delivered by this woman yeah. because they think they are there are those beliefs behind it that this blood is poisonous and sometimes they also think it's a belief that if they support these girls who are not circumcised they get blind or and and yet it is it is trachoma it is cataract it it is it's just other Uh, conditions of the eyes that are suffered from poor sanitation mm -hmm. um, and the other one is about interdependence the three element of a social norm that because the other community members feel that uh, that at right is something of the community then you cannot make your own decision mm -hmm. to say yes and again of course importantly um, the decision making is within the men yeah. uh, who also happen to have their own cultural institutions They have their own parliament you know they have their own set of constitution of course it's unwritten 
compared to our constitution that is written. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the agreements and, uh, and, 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 and rules mm -hmm. that guide these social norms to persist. And um, yeah, so that's actually the, yeah. the And allow me norms. to uh, ask you this other question. Um, FGM is defined by, let's say, World Health Organization as a practice or a procedure that intentionally injures the um, female genital organs. Let's talk about the harmful effects for FGM because there is injure, and she'll be sharing with us some yes. of the effects, but for you as an expert, you can tell us uh, why it's, you know, it's a, harmful effect, it's a harmful practice, it's causing injuries and all that. So what are the health um, well, um, hazards? Well, FGM carries short-term effects, long-term effects, and also development-related uh, yeah. effects. When you look at education, uh, women empowerment, and growth, um, when you look at the short term, of course, first of all, there is this severe pain. And the pain will also come with shock. Yeah, and these girls will also faint. They will have low, 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 low blood uh, in terms of what we call hemoglobin because there's a lot of that bleeding. And uh, again, in, in terms of short term, because of cutting the, the clitoris, they will be able also to grow what we call um, cysts. And they will also be be, be keloids, there will also be fistulas yeah. coming in. There is also urine incontinence and also dripping of urine. I mean, you can't that control is, it. And now when you also have a fistula, you cannot attend to other women meetings, kachama there, yeah? Because of that, it brings, uh, of course, some, mm. some, some odor, you know, some, some smell. Yeah. It's not very, very uh, comfortable. Long term, again, of course, it also affects maternal health. And here it can also cause obstructed labor. Uh, for those who have um, gone through FGM, obstructed labor and delayed labor is, is really very, very common. If you go to many facilities, you'll be able to look at the records. And those communities that practice FGM, you'll be able to, get, to see that obstructed labor is, 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 is really um, very common. Mm -hmm. The other implications is, of course, uh, psychological. You know, this is trauma to this girl. She has a vision. She has a dream, mm. but now the dream is gone. And she does not have any decision-making uh, power in this. Actually, it is, the power remains with the elders and the men. And it is very important, of course, to involve male involvement in this, in this, in this, in this practice and ending the fights. And I think it was a very, it's a good progress for the president to hold a meeting with elders for, and, and, and ex cutters from about 22 counties you know, that still practice FGM. So those are some of the long term. In terms of education, of course, the girl will drop. You know, she can also get pregnant. And if she was circumcised, circumcision is the key. It's actually the license. It's the air mm. ticket, yeah. you know, that now will also open uh, early, um, early marriages uh, to these girls. The implications of early marriage, again, are huge. Yeah. You know, it leads to poverty. You cannot make decisions. You know, you do not have the power to have a good life. And again, in a way, it also contradicts uh, our constitution mm -hmm. to have the best health uh, possible and standards of health. Yeah. In terms of um, empowerment and uh, political, uh, social, politically, then you'll also not be able to transit and move and, 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 and transit to other levels of education, yeah. meaning you will drop and you'll always have uh, women not empowered. If you look at the country that I work, with this is Kajiado County, and we were able to do a study um, sometime back last year, and it was published on 28th of April this year. It was looking at underlying social cultural factors All right. uh, that brings us. Mm -hmm. We'll be getting to the factors. Koriata, you're really yes. agreeing with what Charles is yeah. saying. Um, for people watching and, of course, listening to this conversation, he's talked about some of the effects, especially the medical effects of this. I know you'll be sharing with us more about how, you know, as a teenage, um, a teenage mother, the experience with fistula, but what exactly happens during, you know, when, when that, when, when the ceremony or when pe uh, girls are going through the cut, what exactly happens? Because he's talking about there is pain, you know, there is injur injuries that are caused, some of the infections. Did you experience some of these effects that he's talking about? Yeah, yeah, like, uh, I can tell you that mm. in 
in our communities yeah. we have like three types of circumcision okay. like the kisi and the kuria they just cut the glitoris mm -hmm. and as masses we cut the glitoris and the lips okay. and like somalias they cut the glittery the lips and then they shona <coughs> so <coughs> i think you me a lot of pain mm. first me i have experienced in the hospital because mm. nowadays wana chukua mustiana na wanadunga yetu ilikuwa ile ya they think for you yeah you became brief then you sit then they cut like <laughs> one kg of meat yeah so first it is very painful then you bleed you bleed a lot like me i was very young i was 15 so not even 15 i was 13 so the next thing they did, they took me to the hospital because I was bleeding. Yeah. Then it took like a month. I was not ill. Mm. Then after that, mm, I think it was like a faint. Mm. They cut. So like if you time your periods, yeah. even now I experience that even right now. Mm. If you time your periods, the pain still come. The, 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 the place where it was cut. Mm. Utaske yu, kuna uchungu fulani, sa ile period sina, karibia kuja, mm. unasikia pain fulani. Then, I, by the way, in Iliendo, see, then, they say that those are faint. That was, katso ukiona, ikona madhara. Yeah. Kwa sababu first, umesikia yu pain, mm. ume, umeenda shule, mm -hmm. ume drop out of school, umepata mtoto na weni mtoto. Like me, I was a very bright girl. In school? In school. So, like, my other, f my friends were in the secondary. Wait, wait. Like, our class, we were four, mm -hmm. and we dropped all of us. So, boys were in the school, and I remember, I was taking number one, number two. Then so, boys, after class eight, you were married yeah, off? Yeah, yeah. So, like, now, after class eight, mm -hmm. you were married off, then, Unaona wale vijana wakikuja wanakuambia vile eh, live ya secondary ko vile nini alafu wameenda college they come back they are telling you about Nairobi and you are just there in the village even aujui mm. ni nini inaendelea so me because i had that desire in my heart you had so, desire to kuendelea na shule kuendelea na shule ama tukufanya something for the community yeah. so nilianza hata kuambia to mama tufagie tufanye nini so there was this organization called avia 2 they were the one when you were kujanga first to a village na kuanza kutu kutu empower as young women mm. so they see the passion yenye nilikuwa nayo like kusaidia nini community but i didn't know that nilikuwa na fistula mm. which fistula cost yake kubwa ni FGM mm. because nilikuwa na prolonged labor prolonged labor juu hapa juu kwa fajina ime imekuwa ngumu so ile elasticity naitwa elasticity mm. Ay, ime aiko yeah. so the only thing yenye it happen juu hapa imekuwa juu imekuwa ngumu the only thing ni uraruke pande yeah. nyingine so i think FGM i to say din alafu like now in our area, in our mass island. Our men are marrying from other communities. Because they have gone to school and they Because wameenda shule yeah. na wamejua utamu ya kitu enye imakatua na utamu ya kitu ijakatua. So even we are losing our men. Sezu kienda kwa village kuna wasiana yutu wengi ya wajaoleo. Why? First, I'm not educated. Secondly, I'm not sweet. Because when you come to Gari, I mean, come to Land Rover, let's move away to Gears, and you at least see, it is the truth. Yeah, yeah. let's move away to Gears, and you at then Gari Gurume. I mean, Gari Akuskuma, my dear, the Gari is Niko. It's automatic, na ina songa. So like that, kwa min, kwa na umewe tu, ndio nakuta pastoralist, they marry, wana wakewingi. Why? Because that a, that a circumcision ama hiyo mambo ya FGM ita ku discourage kwa sex because even sex iko painful okay yeah okay mm.
Uh, let me get to you. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> so, Lian, um, you said you are not. Your parents said they were. Uh, they will accept what you are saying because you are not for the idea of FGM. Mm. Where did you get this from? You know, how did you? decide that you know what i do not want to go through fgm is it because you had seen girls <coughs> going through so much pain harmful effects what exactly happened that you said no to fgm okay well i was growing up something surprisingly i, I grew up in a cosmopolitan place okay. where all tribes are present right. kamba kiku is a law every tribe is there it's a place called Ngurman. so some of my neighbors are from other tribes. While I was growing up, I was in a boarding school. I had friends from other tribes. So when you close school, especially during December, a lot of practices, FGM practices were going on around my area. One day, my mom, our immediate neighbor, was doing that to their daughters, two daughters. And then I intended to go and see. I've never seen before. I remember I was in closet. I just saw those ladies being brought outside the house and women holding their backs and the process is taking place. I just cried and went back home. They told my mom in the evening, this is what is called circumcision. I'm not going through it. What did she say? Was she... She just laughed. For the first time she just laughed and said, you have to go through it? No. Oh, okay. The good thing, she's a nurse, coincidentally. Ah, and nice. my dad is a medic. Ah, okay. So they are learned. So the, she just laughed and told me, okay, it's your choice. I can't force it. So likely, I, ex I escaped. And I said, if those ladies who are not my size are not going through this practice, and they've made it in life, they've made it in education, why me? I want to be a good example. I refused totally yeah though some people again were against it but i stood by my trees mm -hmm. then when i went to netherlands i learned a lot i wanted to be a role model in my community and i said because they say if you don't succumb there's a girl she'll get pregnant earlier because of the feelings are so high mm -hmm. so first of all i decided that i'll not let my parents down i'll prove them wrong that that is not the thing I said I'll not accept early pregnancy. Also, they believe that if you don't get circumcised, you'll not be married by a man from that community. Yeah. Some of them, they used even to tell me, so you refused to we'll marry you. You'll stay in your father's home. I was like, it's okay. It's not a must that I get married to a Maasai. Yeah. Who said so? As long as I achieve my dreams, everything else is a second option to yeah. me. Yeah. They, they were just laughing. But nowadays, they even... They admire who I am. Most of the parents admire who <coughs> I am. Most of the girls have followed my steps. They are now refusing, and I'm happy for that. Yeah. Amref contributed so much for me to be who I am because I proved them wrong. I schooled, I did my diploma, I did my degree. I'm now graduating from my degree. Yeah. This coming December. Yeah. They'll come celebrate. I've not let my parents down, and I've not let Amref down. Yes. This and let me, me. Ra, let me ask you, um, you, said, you said no to FGM and your parents because they were learned, they just like, were like, okay, they supported you. Mm -hmm. Maybe do you have siblings <coughs> uh, or sisters who were for the idea of FGM and they were allowed to go through it? No, okay. incidentally, I'm a first one okay. in my family. And the second one is a brother, the third one is a sister who is now in high school. Ah, okay. She, uh, no way. So you she can't have a good, no way. <laughs> so you said no even no to way. your small no sister? Way, no, no, no way. Okay, fine. Um, Charles, let's talk about the alternative because now um, more organizations are trying to discourage FGM, the practice of FGM, because of some of the effects that we are getting from uh, what we are being told now. So what are some of the alternative rite of passages that are being introduced because it's a, it's a cultural affair but organizations the government should introduce to the communities highly affected um the alternative rights of passage are we have different types of them uh, the churches have their own uh, designed alternative right of passage we promote the cultural community-led alternative right of passage 
Why are we doing that? Because the community that we work with, uh, the, the, the Maasai, have their own constitution. And they have, I said earlier, they have their own uh, social norms. And the Maasai have 10 <coughs> steps that a girl goes through until she gets to a point that she's circumcised. The 10 steps starts with the mother, who is very close to this girl and daughter. And once there are those secondary characteristics, then she will have to signal and inform them there that, yeah, this girl has grown and I think we need to do circumcision. Why? They also have a fear, because it's a social norm, that this girl might get pregnant without being circumcised. So once that information is passed, the men who are now the custodians of culture and decision making start all that preparation. He also talks to the other elders. But I've got a very good message from my wife. And I think it's a good time that uh, after maybe all that process, I'll also be getting some status, you know, some sort of power. And uh, it goes that by preparing, the old man will have to go and get all the things that are required for a ceremony. And uh, one day before that, then before circumcision, they make sure that they have all things that are needed for this particular practice, mm -hmm. including the kata, which will be there one day earlier. And in the next day, of course, there will be circumcision, and there will be men are not allowed to be there. So one of the things that happens is as they cut or as they circumcise the girls, the men have no idea what FGM is to their girls. And for those strong girls, of course, uh, many years ago, they will even need the support of men by, by, by tying a rope to this girl. And yeah. <laughs> they will be put, because they, 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 these are old women who do not really have a lot of energy. Then the ceremony is there, it's a communal thing. People will come and celebrate, the men will also celebrate, the Morans will celebrate. And the girl, of course, after that will be married mm -hmm. off. So why the ARP? ARP is to make sure that we fit the design of the of the of the of the of the ARP model within the Maasai uh, ten steps. Maybe you can tell us what it entails. Yes, it entails, of course, um, three days of training of girls. Of course, these girls in schools will be getting some sort of education on sexual reproductive health. They will be able to get access to information. But at this particular community, that has, of course, now realized the effects of FGM because we also have to do the education of the community, have to plan for uh, a ceremony. But the ceremony, what it entails is three days training for girls, mm -hmm. and then one day they wear what we call pageant night, where just girls, you know, share the experience, um, they are monitored and, uh, and, and, and assessed for knowledge increase, you know, on sexual reproductive health, issues of rights, and, uh, and, and also the cultural components are also introduced here. And the uh, ARP also means we have to bring some aspects of cultural rights to make sure also that they are blessed on the day of the ceremony. So the girls, the elders will be there who have the mandate to bless the girls and they'll be able to bless them, you know, to become women, but without the cuts. Right. The problem is the cut, but all the other issues <coughs> have to remain. Mm -hmm. And we have also other, other, other friends, donors coming to witness. The government also comes there and the girls are also able to give their communique on issues affecting them. Because it's the right time that we also have their leaders uh, coming in. Um, apparently, I think we are happy with Kajiado because the leaders come, but sometimes they also fear the issues of uh, missing thoughts for supporting FGM sure. as a social norm, and it's like saying we should stop it. But I think the leaders of Kajiado have been in front line to really uh, support. support ARPs, mm -hmm. uh, because it's about supporting education of girls, it's about human rights, it's about gender issues, yeah. and the results are enormous, yeah. a big mm -hmm. achievements. Mm -hmm. So far in the Kajiado County, if you look at uh, Kajiado East, we have the first member of parliament who is a woman, Peris Tobiko. This is what we look, we look at. After the cut, then what happens? Mm -hmm. It's about ARP that now brings empowerment and looks at gender issues at those angles. Um, so, so this is a ceremony. Currently, we are planning about four, four, four communities. Of course, we are facilitating the community to be in front, you know, to use their powers 
and the men will have the powers of the sticks, for example. Um, the ex cutters will also be part of it. They will <coughs> now save GM, and uh, and uh, and uh, we have about four communities now leading the the the, the, the ceremonies, mm. and we are happy because the it will also um, it will also come when we will also be launching the Kajiado County uh, FGM policy, right. which has actually looked at the gaps from the other policies mm -hmm. and from the other laws mm -hmm. to be able to strengthen and address issues at the community level and at the grassroots level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And Koryata, how would you say FGM has generally affected your life? Mm. Because okay. you, it, 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 you were forced to marriage, so yeah. you became a um, young mother. You also were a wife, you know. How has it affected you? I know you, you also struggled with um, fistula, you know. Mm, like, let me tell you, I told you that I was a very bright girl. Mm. I think Sezi Ningekua was a very serious lawyer mm. or a doctor somewhere or even a presenter like you. Mm. But you see now, because of FGM, yeah. uh, I knew that I was now a woman. Yeah. Even let me tell you, some girls, even their mom cannot send them to bring something because I'm a woman. I'm like you, mama. So who are you to tell me this and this? So it has affected my life, like in education. That is number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and let me tell you, overall it is education. Yeah. That is the... Then, like, I have gone through a lot of pain in my life. I've lost a lot of time in my life. Do, like, when... I had fistula. Singe toka kwenda soko. Singe kuwa social na wengine. Singe jua vile life inaenda. And that's why now I'm a fistula ambassador because if I take any woman for a fistula treatment, I must take her back home, mend her, and tell her there is an outside world that you must come. Gwe nusa nyanya. We can make a group. We can ombawa waste of money. Women enterprise. By the way, it has affect my life. Yeah. Then we have this problem. Bona like FGM. What is the problem? Yeah, exactly. What is the problem? Yeah. The problem is this. Number is a boardroom activist. Like to say me is it to downge apa and apandu musho. No, no. Yeah. Like Leshore, I may change life. Ya was tena kama huyu kwa sababu alienda grassroots. Yeah. Na kujua what is the problem. Na kuongea le like kimasai. Le like kiu saizu utoke tu wende kwa masai. Mm. Uambie, let me tell you, FGM is bad. Hata nisikiza. What Dani atakusikiza. Kwa hivyo kuna hizi ma briefcase and jewels. Si ulikujanga mingi sana na sika ingeo mashinani. Kuingia Unaenda na wapiga picha na sema titi titi na peleka nini yangu na rudi Nairobi kuka na kukula vizuri na kijiko. But FGM batu ilikuwe naendelea. Mm. So that's why I'm a fistula ambassador, I'm a FGM champion because nimejua ni mimi. It is me mwenye ndato uyo mustiana pain. Like in our village we have very, very few learned girls. Very few, very few. Like say si mimi ndio niko role model why nikipita kwa barabara tunaweza pigwa salute and I'm just a drop out a school drop out so kama tutapata njia ni watu hawatakuwa kikaa kwa ma boardroom like kuongea english the whole day mm. na kusema hivi na kuja kwa community na kupea like 500 shillings 500 shillings say si we have like deactivate deactivate tuliwaambia tutaki pesa like CC to call Lulunga elites, ni youth group, yeah, our area. Atutaki, what when you are talking about? Because this community, we are these people will just come and give us some sitting allowances. So and what then, exactly do they need? Mm -hmm. Because you, you, you're saying fighting FGM, what exactly is required? In a person, in a family, apart from Kukuja to the communities and give. Kenya na taki kana. Who is reaching these girls? Yeah. Where are the parents? Where are the menders? Like me, 
if you have a professor in our village na ameka Nairobi miaka zote like this girl saizi akimaliza tuseme degree zake na kuja akae hapa Nairobi hajaienda magadi wasiana watajua aje effect sa 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 sifjem ni mbaya so we have the problem because au wasiana kuna mtu anawafikia na kuambia ukweli no no okay yeah is that true charles where is the gap because yeah. uh, his excellency has pronounced himself and committed to ensure that fgm is a thing of the past by 2022 what needs to be done to achieve that um i think a number of things needs to be done and uh, one is to really engage communities to define the values yeah. the social norms behind it otherwise then the practice uh, will continue mm -hmm. i think the other one is about the legislation mm -hmm. Uh, of course, the enforcement uh, also has to be done of the existing laws and also get more laws that are culturally uh, contextualized to that, this particular community and their, their traditions. And I think it, it, will, it will make a very big sense mm. if you let them define and interrogate their social norms. Um, the other one is, of course, is within the social norms, also look at some of these elements that will really help these communities in terms of collective. This community that practices FGM has to learn from the other community that is doing well, that's promoting ARPs, there are many girls uh, going to school because they need that learning. So you have to encourage. And I think that's what the, the Kajiado County um, uh, policy will look at. Yeah? And also ensure that the conservatists you know, these are the people who are the custodians of these cultures, yeah. are involved, yeah? The boys as well are involved, they are educated, yeah, they're given more information about the effects of FGM. As Nampaya said, what do, what do they lose um, as well? The, issue, the, other, the other one is, of course, the president also looked at, is the issues of cross-border. Yeah. And I think the president, one of the action points is that we talk to the other presidents of Ethiopia and also Tanzania, where we have... Uh, uh, communities practicing FGM in these areas. Across uh, border, at the moment, from one of the studies that, that AMREF did um, on uh, underlying factors influencing FGM concentration, is at about 2%. Mm. Um, so they start need to have cross border and regional learning and cross border. Mm -hmm. The RP already has been scaled to Tanzania, and so far, about, I think by now, 18,000 girls have gone through the, pro the process. And most of them have been able to transit mm. uh, to other levels of education. All right. And they're <coughs> happy to see mm. Gloria here because this is the fruits of that. The other thing that needs to be done is, of course, bringing men closer, yeah, engaging them and showing them also videos. We have this video that was done in Mali. And when men see this video, they really see what circumcision is. You know, they cry. It's not very easy to see mm. uh, men even, even crying. Like you know, it's you not say, easy. They actually it's don't not easy. Know so it yeah. gets touched because they are very close yeah. also to their daughters. Yeah. And thus, it's, it's, it's just educating them and letting them take the front line in terms of um, designing their own ARPs mm. and saying how they want their All girls right. to go through. Thank you so much. And, and we are winding up. Saleyan, tell us, you escaped uh, FGM. Your parents were learned enough not to you know, involve you in, in, to get you involved in that and also from your own experiences and luckily through the help of uh, these anti-FGM campaigns. What will it take for Kenya to end FGM either by 2022 or can we eradicate FGM from where you sit and what exactly do we need to, to do as a nation? Okay, to eradicate FGM is a collective responsibility. Both the national government, the county government, should come up together with the NGOs, e.g. AMREF. They should come together, join hands. That's the only way they can achieve this. E.g. they should borrow the techniques used by AMREF. They come to the grassroots, as my colleague Nambayon say, and stop the boardroom meetings because it will not bring a solution. Mm -hmm. They should come to the grassroots, hold seminars, that's how AMREF do. Go to bombers. The national government can use the local chiefs. Legislation also, enforcing the law that they put it there. They should come down there, use the local chiefs, the elders, 
the mamas in the Kijiji. It's, it's our all, it's a collective responsibility of all of us. Okay. Us, like the role models, we should all join hands, tell the people the negative effect that FGM, in fact, it's a, it's a negative thing, not a positive. All right. That's the only way we can eradicate. That's the Otherwise, way. by using, just sitting, like my colleagues say, mm. in every station, in every big rallies, political rallies, it will not bring to a solution. It will not. It will not. It's a great challenge. This yeah. means even this show is supposed to mm. be somewhere in the village <laughs> yeah. to educate the people who yeah. are directly affected. I yeah. think we have to wind up unless we yeah. have something to say to yeah. parents uh, out here. What, what I want to tell the NGOs yeah. and the community, there is networking. The NGOs can make one network to fight FGM. No, no. One network. To kia sa shikana wote. Sio mimi leo namba yu naonekana kwa kijiji. Nimekuja nimesema, ah, mimi nimesema FGM ina pigwa hivi. Huyu kesha ingie, kesho, kesho. So watu tu atasoe na waseme nini. Like now in our, in our villages. Wastano wanatairi usiku wa manane. Na ina mana kwa sababu. Mi nilitairi nikapitia hizo steps zote. Ndiyo nikue ya holy maasai girl. But now, unanitairi usiku na sijapitia hizo steps ingine. That's mean I'm not holy. So, si utoa hata hii FGM ni unanikata mbure. Nikai basa unholy kabisa. Then, sa hizi tuseme kama ningekuwa ni miyakatu wa pua. Ni kama wastiana hote nye tumetairi wa tumekata pua. Ingekuwa a national disaster. Lakini kwa sababu ni mali nye imejificha. Hakuna venye, like serikali ama dunia wataona, jubado ni, ni mali enye mejificha. Kwa hivyo, what I tell our communities, mali enye mungu walieka na meificha, uwache ikae kama vile ile umbo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Koriata. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you so much, Selian, for really this important discussion, timely discussion. We've had hope the necessary stakeholders will really consider what has been discussed tonight. Asante Nisana for your time. Thank you. All right. Thank you also for watching Channel One Weekend and of course Family Matters tonight. My name is Purity Mosia. We have to wind up at that point. Good night and God bless. Thank you.